Welcome everyone, my name is Liis Kukkonen and this is Practitioner's Viewpoint. In this series of podcasts I will be interviewing practitioners from different fields on how they see physical activity in their work. So today I have the honor to introduce my guest Mika Fisk. Mika is a business coach and a sales and marketing professional. He is helping companies to grow and reach their full potential. He has previously sa- said that he is on a mission to making life feel better for everyone. So today we are not only talking about sales and marketing, but we are also talking about physical activity, changing one's behavior and Mika's experience with Fibion. So welcome, Mika. Thank you, Liz. It's a pleasure so, to be here. So let's start with your background. What is your educational sure. background and uh, what do you do professionally? All right. Um, well, my educational background is in, uh, well, first of all, I have two degrees. The first one being Bachelor of Hospitality Management, um, which basically translates to the field of tourism. I used to work in tourism for about 15 years before I made the switch over to business coaching. Um, but my second degree uh, is uh, from the University of Uvascula, um, intercultural communication was was my major, and I have a master's in philosophy. Okay, great. Mm. So professionally, what do you do? Well, I work as a business coach here at the startup factory in Uvascula, Finland, and um, my job entails a, quite a number of things, really. But as you said earlier, my work basically is circled around business growth, helping people and businesses grow. Um, and I provide coaching in a number of fields, not just sales or, or marketing. But that's it in a, in a nutshell. So um, how many companies you have usually going on at the same time in coaching? Um, well, here at the Startup Factory, we have roughly 30, 35 customers in our clientele. And uh, I work with about 10 of them. Um, I have worked with over 200 companies in the past, ranging from small and medium-sized businesses to even even a few global big players. That's great to hear. And uh, just to our listeners, we are going to talk in the first part of this podcast mainly about physical activity and exercise. And then in the second part, we are going to talk about the sales and marketing of um for example, physical activity and exercise. But my next question is actually about physical activity and exercise. So how is it with you? Do you exercise regularly or uh, how much physical activity do you get weekly? Honestly, not enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just th- that's the honest answer. Um, but I, I do tend to exercise once or twice a week, um, maybe go for a run and do a bit of weightlifting. Um, so not as much as I'd like to I have two small children and life is pretty hectic. But, you know, I try to find an hour here, half an hour there and, and do a little bit of, you know, whatever comes to mind. So um, I, I cycle to work uh, three times a week. So that's something. Mm-hmm. And um, but, yeah, it's uh, all in all, I'm 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 pretty, pretty happy with the level of exercise that I get. Maybe oh, one or two hours more wouldn't hurt. Mm, I, I guess quite 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 many of us feel the same. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so how do you feel about this pandemic and working from home? Has this changed your habits, your activity habits? Because it tends to be mm. that some people feel that it has increased their physical activity levels, and then there is the other part of people who say that it has. Uh, they are so passive now. How mm. do you feel? Um, well. I, I don't know if you can use the term winner here, but I, I think I, I mean the group of <laughs> winners, so to speak. Um, for me, the pandemic um, really sort of made me think about how I, how should I exercise? How should I, you know, make sure that I get enough out, outdoor activities and, and the like. Um, so um, I went I started running a bit more. I enjoyed the outdoors more, and um, I started doing different kinds of things uh, simply because I, I sort of felt that I had more time in between meetings and and um, 
but yeah for for me i my level of physical activity increased a little bit hmm. that's that's great to hear and uh I hope that you can also keep it up now that the yeah. pandemic is is kind of hopefully over. Yeah, um, that so makes I, two of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I really like having you as a podcast um, guest today because you're actually my first guest from whom I'd like to ask about the, about their experience with Fibian. Most of our listeners mm. probably know that Fibian is is sponsoring this podcast and it is an activity measurement or behavior change a tool if you want to say that that way so uh, you had a, an activity measurement done with Fibian first of all why did you do the measurement mm -hmm. well yeah I had it done about a, a little over a year ago and um, I just why I had it done is that I felt that it was interesting from the get-go um the idea of uh, attaching a little piece of um measurement tool to to my leg or you i know you can put it in your pocket but i put it on my leg just you know for me philosophically was uh it, it was an easy bridge to cross over because for me i've never really been a fan of these uh wrist watches that you know do these measurements uh, but I don't know. For me, the, my, my life philosophy is if the leg moves, <laughs> where there is leg movement, there is life. <laughs> and, okay. and for me, Fibion just uh, just came across as a really interesting possibility and fit my way of thinking, so to speak. Okay, so so uh, Fibion does not give you any uh, notification when you have to. It's just like a way to assess the week yeah so, yeah so yeah. You had, did you have a weekly measurement i yeah i had a weekly measurement i kept it on for seven days um for me it was really easy um i basically just put it on and forgot it was there mm -hmm. um yeah just and i and i love the the report that i then got because uh well i, I think you might ask me more about that mm -hmm. but it was really straightforward and it was very easy for me to uh you know, take what I had learned and change my behavior accordingly. So, uh, Fabian reports gives it gives quite a lot of information. Uh, what was the most imp like surprising thing for you? In do you remember? I can, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was a, it was an eye opener because um, you you know, everybody keeps telling that you shouldn't sit too much or you shouldn't stand too long of a time uh, at once but um, but for me I you know seeing the report and and looking at the numbers of how many hours I, I spent sitting how many hours I stood up and and were running or walking um, it just it just really made me think of how to better structure my day um, I guess you could say that it, it shed light into things I really didn't even realize to think about, things that have a profound effect on, on my well-being and have had an perfect effect since I've you know done made some changes according to the report. So what were the changes that you made in your habits? I've made a lot of small, uh, what I guess you could say small changes. Mm. Um, I've started cycling more to work. Um, and, uh, I take, I make sure that I take enough breaks from sitting. I also make sure that I take enough breaks from standing up. I used to work as a re front receptionist as a ho at a hotel and, you know, there I got accustomed to standing eight, even nine hours a day, um, which is sort of a habit that has sort of stuck with me since. And, but, but through Fibion of you know, just taking those breaks and um, started cycling more and just realizing that even the smallest things can have, when repeated, can have a profound effect on, on your level of physic, uh, physical activity. But yeah, th those are really the biggest changes for me. And uh, what's been really funny to notice lately is that some of my colleagues that, uh, you know, I've worked with during the past two years, I've 
they've they've started noticing this that oh you're standing up you're now you're sitting down why are you doing this and it's it's starting to have a sort of a snowball effect <laughs> yeah you're spreading the word <laughs> yes yes yeah so it's as you said that there's there are really small things that they're piling mm. up so i think yeah. people are usually overestimating what they can do in a short period of time and then they're underestimating what they can do in small amounts in a long period of time this i think this is is true in so many fields of life yeah. not only in physical activity but yeah. in, in other things too so um you said that you have made some changes mm. um have you have you felt some uh, difference in the way you feel in the energy levels like you know what has been the effect for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I think I lost maybe one or two, two, two or four pounds. Um, so I lost a little bit of weight. Um, but just in general, I feel like um, like I'm a little bit more energetic. Um, I don't tire as easily during a work day. Um, but also another big effect this has sort of brought upon as a as sort of a side effect has been that I've, you know, I've started paying more attention to the nutrition, the food that I eat, mm -hmm. uh, and just, uh, how I could, yeah, how could I, you know, make sure that the food I eat and the timetable that I keep, uh, you know, are benefiting me in the best possible way. That's quite interesting because um, Fibian report doesn't really give you the nutritional uh, information, but it does give you energy exp expenditure data. So you probably mm. also had this daily report of energy spent yeah. on on different activities. And this I have seen with my clients that it, people are quite interested about it. So how do mm. you do you remember the the chart where there were? Um, yeah. information about energy spend it on for example standing or light walking training mm. so uh were there any surprises there for you or or not mm. well not not in the energy expenditure chart but mm. um there were i was surprised i just general sort of an overview from the report was that um i didn't sit as much as i thought i did um, which was a little bit of a surprise for me. Um, and I also thought that I would, you know, run or walk a little more than I actually then did. Okay. So uh, for me, the report contained a lot of sort of good things. I, you know, my level of sitting or the amount that I sit is, is at a good level. Mm -hmm. However, I don't, I don't walk or um, run mm -hmm. as, as much as I could or should. So um, also in, in, in those terms, it was an eye opener. And I felt that the report was uh, easy, easy to read and easy to understand. And also easy to then implement the changes. Mm. There, is I, a, there is a goal yeah. setting tool that you can, uh, you can set tools, uh, goals, and then uh, during a later measurement, you can see whether the, those goals have come come true or not. So to whom would you suggest Fibian's measurement? Honestly, I think uh, it, it, it's a tool that should be used everywhere and by everyone. Um, but if, if I had to narrow it down, I would probably um, suggest it to people who don't necessarily, uh, who, who don't consider themselves over athletes or people who are doing a lot of physical activities, uh, basically to everyday people, um, men and women between the ages of 30 to 45, you know, who are just statistically are in going through those life phases where there's a lot of things happening in work life and where there's a lot of happening in the home. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I that would probably be my suggestion. And I guess to anybody who wants to um sort of get a get a simple but precise overview of their level activity. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we I I think the probably most of our customers or Fibian's customers are in the these 
age ranges that you said, mm. but like lately we've had projects with elderly people because mm. their levels of physical activity is extremely important to their well-being. And we also have had interest for, for children because mm. especially in high schools, uh, p children have been in distance school for a long mm. time. So, so there are some issues with the physical activity levels. So it can yeah, be fitted can for any, any age group really. So um, to sum up this part of the podcast, do you have any suggestions for Fibian's team to improve the service? What would you like mm. there right. to be? <laughs> um, if anything, um, I would like them to give me a call and, <laughs> okay. uh, and suggest another period of usage. Um, I'd like to use it again. I'll tell them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but that's that's really all I can think of. I've been very happy with, with the service, so. Okay, so, so you'd like to do a reassessment to see whether yeah, no you, complaint here. <laughs> you, you've had some change. In this part of our podcast, we're going to discuss the sales and marketing of uh, physical activity and exercise. Mm. And I am so excited to hear your thoughts about this because often what I've heard from the field is that physical activity and exercise are difficult to market. So how, what do you think? Is this claim true? I would say yes and no. Um, yes, in terms of there's quite a bit of competition out there, which means that it's really difficult for companies to stand out to differentiate themselves from from the rest. So yes, in from that aspect. Mm -hmm. But then again, no, because there's a lot of potential customers out there. So it's sort of a uh, vice versa type of thing here. Um, where there's a lot of competition, you know, it's difficult to get customers. However, with a lot of competition, there are usually a lot of potential customers. Mm -hmm. So what it really does come down to is being able to know your customer target groups mm -hmm. and then communicating your message in a in the most fascinating way possible mm -hmm. to that particular audience. Uh, so my next question is actually, um, my next question is mm -hmm. that usually when it comes to the sales and marketing of physical activity or exercise, mm -hmm. then we do quite well within the groups that already like physical activity or exercise. Mm. And then it's much more difficult to reach those groups who who would actually need physical activity mm. interventions. Mm. So what do you think, what could we do better to reach the groups that, uh, you know, all these potential mm. customers? Yeah, this is a great question. I think, um, you know, as an outsider, mm -hmm. As a, I mean, as a person who's not working in the physical activity field, I feel um, that the marketing that I often encounter is rather one-sided um, from the physical activity companies, gyms and, and the like. Um, they tend to portray a certain kind of art, archetype, so to speak. Um, and they tend to portray the effects of their services in a rather one-dimensional way. So what I'm trying to say here is that um, I think that for a lot of companies working the working in the sort of well-being field, uh, they would have to try to understand and get to know their core customers even better. Mm. Um, also those customers they're trying to reach and they then would have to provide more customer oriented marketing, more customer oriented solutions and not use the staples or the general um, ways of marketing that they tend to use. It's not always about growing muscle. It's not always about, you know, getting leaner. It's not always about, you know, doing more push-ups. I'm, I'm generalizing here on, on mm. purpose, but I do feel that um, you, you would have to diversify your message and really try to get into the core of, you know, those people you're trying to reach because what motivates them, what drives them 
tends to be different than those who are already, you know, using these services quite a bit. And this is something I think that uh, a lot of companies, not just in the well-being field, but in other fields, tend to forget. Mm. It's understandable because um, to diversify your message, it means that you basically have to start thinking differently, you know, in-house, in in the organization Mm. and, and sort of accept that the characteristics of of marketing and characteristics of sales might even change per customer group mm, that's a great yes i i agree with you and uh, you said that it's uh, we should have more dimensions so mm. uh, which are the dimensions or what would you see um myself for example mm. i realized that um uh physical activity marketing for for example mm. for people with uh, mental illness is mm. one field that we haven't used so much or and it's and um and i see that the how do you say the feedback for for marketing for for people with mental mm. illness is has actually been quite quite good so can you see as an outsider mm. uh any other dimensions or yeah. yeah, I think um, on a on a sort of a global scale, on a bigger scale, um, I'm very happy to see that the biggest companies in the world, if you look at their marketing, um, it's it's different from what it used to be. It's uh, it's more emotion driven, and it's it's even at times um, focused on uh, on a it, fo- it tends to focus on things that are not easily necessary, that aren't transparent in what they're necessarily trying to convey. What I'm trying to say here is that they they market in a way that promotes, provokes thoughts, provokes emotions, and are directly linked to an experience that the target group is probably having. Mm. So in a way, I would call this smart marketing. Mm. Um, emotion-based marketing and that's something I think in general that this is the direction that we will probably be moving towards more marketing will become more human in a way do you do you have some examples that we you'd like to some yeah some expa- examples that companies that are actually doing this really well. It doesn't have to be in the physical activity marketing, but, mm. you know, maybe something that we all know. Mm. Sure, sure. Um, well, basically, all you have to do is open up the TV and look at all these big uh, global brands and the way they they produce their stuff, um, the way they try to convey their message. Um, from But from a sort of a local point of view from a from a Finnish point of view there's a company here in Uvascula that provides Shopify services for for businesses mm. called Woolman and Woolman is a good example of providing a, a service that is very um, customer oriented in how they depict what what it is they they provide for the customers but yeah all I would say all the big 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 brands in the world are mm. are doing this sort of a sh- there's a sh- there's a clear shift that can be seen in how they mm. try to attract their customers yeah I, I don't know if it, if if I'm just getting this right but what what I'm thinking of is for example uh, companies that um, you know as for example in women's clothing you'd see mm. a lot of like real size models nowadays mm. it's not yeah. only supermodels so you kind of you know, it's quite nice because you get the feel that what would this look on me? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. is that something you are talking yes, about? Yes, that's <laughs> yes, that's a, that's a that's a good example. Definitely, yes, yes. Okay. That th- that is one aspect where you can see that um, they've those brands working, w- you know, within the women's clothing industry or makeup industry. There is this clear shift towards a more normalized or or standard image of mm-hmm. of what a woman might might like and enjoy and respect yeah so uh my next question is more about sales we have been now talking about marketing mm. even though i know that you're you have done most of your work uh, in in the 
field of sales. So mm -hmm. when it comes to sales in in medical services or healthcare services, quite often what the what I've heard is that it's kind of like unethical to sell and it's difficult mm -hmm. to sell healthcare. Um, what what do you think about that? Is it is it unethical? <laughs> well, um, the funny thing about sales is that first of all, everybody has an opinion about it, um, and um, it's not just you know in the in the field of well-being or physical activity that there are there's this uh, sort of an image that sales is somehow bad or or unethical. It's it's something that I come across with no matter what the field of you know practices um, or business field is. But what was actually the question? <laughs> so do you think that it, it is more unethical to sell, for example, mm. um, healthcare services than um, I don't know a new pair of trousers or or ice cream? Um, no, definitely not. It's uh, for me. It's it's all the same. Um, I think that the the biggest thing is the assessment of impact on the end user or the customer. Um, that is all that at the end of the day should matter. Of course, with um, you know, uh, there are certain ethical guidelines, field specific ethical guidelines, which is a great thing. And that's how it should be. Um, these things are regulated within certain fields. But no, to me, it's, um, it's, it, it really comes down to how can you help the customer um, and really knowing your customer. And if, if for any reason you, you know, the, the service you're providing doesn't help the customer enough, then they're not going to make the choice of selecting you. Mm. But no, for me, there's, yeah. there's really no difference. Yeah. Unless we market or do uh, sales, then people don't really know about our good services. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about reaching out to the right people. Um, so now when you think about sales generally in, in the physical activity, healthcare mm. services, so what would be your suggestions to kind of like maybe to small businesses, um, what could they do better? You said mm. something about marketing, they, they should know their customer. Is there anything else you'd like to suggest? Well, honestly, it all comes down to that. I've, you know, I've worked with a number of small businesses over over these past seven years and hand to god hand to heart so to speak um nine out of ten have not sufficiently sort of analyzed who their customer is and they're writing on assumptions and they get those assumptions right somewhat mm. um but yeah my 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 suggestion to almost every customer that I that I work with is that really dig down into your customer segments um, because oftentimes, like I said, maybe nine out of 10 times, they haven't really done the work well enough, which, you know, when, 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 you, when you hear that, um, you have to bear in mind that when you don't focus on getting to know your customer and narrowing down your focus group, what it means, in the short and in the long run, is that you spend too much money on wrong target groups, you spend too much time on wrong target groups. So basically all your hard work is in the risk of going to waste if you are not you know, convinced and sure about who it is you want to reach and, and what are then the channels that these people or these companies use and mm -hmm. target those those channels and those companies. So that's, I mean, I know what people, this is a, you know, know your customer is sort of a, even a boring thing because it gets repeated so much. But like I said, every company that walks through our front door here at the starter factory, if I look at their target groups, I'm going to go, mm, no, 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 you, you got to get back to work. This isn't good <laughs> enough. <laughs> that's a great advice. Um, so just like we're, we're slowly coming to the end of our podcast, but I'd like to really know from your point of view, what is, what do you think are the future developments uh, in the sales and marketing for 
for physical activity, maybe healthcare in a way also. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think, well, for one, I think there will be tools will be developed that will help you target more um, individual customers. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing a trend that will probably lead to a, a place where reaching out to individual customers through these tools is going to be one, one big change. And then another is the more emotion based marketing, uh, small, even more and more small and business, small businesses are starting to realize that they have to diversify and they have to mm, make their meaning more or sorry, make their marketing more attractive and interesting there. I think a lot of people are realizing that we can go, we, we cannot proceed like we used to proceed. Mm -hmm we have to do something to make sure our brand is interesting and appealing to everybody. So those are the two big things that I'm, I'm seeing. And um, also a third part, the third thing, um, a lot of people tend to think that inbound marketing is the way the world is going to work in the future. Wrong. You're still going to need sales. You're still going to need those people skills. Um, so that's sort of a, an old thing that keeps, you know, it just keeps mm -hmm. staying fresh. So for anybody listening and thinking that <laughs> we're going to go 100% inbound, great. But just make sure you have those, you know, traditional people selling skills because you're going to need them no matter what your service is. Yeah, I mean, you have to get to the people. So I, I do mm. agree that the, there is a reason why, why companies still have sales, mm. sales departments. Don't you think so? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Great. Um, I'm so glad that you agreed to be our guest today, Mika. And, it was a lot uh, of fun. Thank and, you. And uh, do you just for my last question for you? Mm. Do you have a goal in uh, in the physical activity and exercise levels? Do you have a goal for the upcoming year that you'd like to reach, or do you feel that you're in a really good place? Um, yeah, th there is a goal that I would like to reach, um, which is four hours of physical activity each week and um, to make sure that I stick to that. Mm -hmm. And then um, then go back to the nutrition part even a bit more. Those are the two things that I'm sort of focusing in on. And also waiting for that call from Fibion to <laughs> get me another subscription. <laughs> <laughs> I make sure that they will give you give you a Great. call. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank and you, thank Liz. you for all our listeners. We will be back next week with a new guest. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.